More interesting news out of Canada today. Four Mexican temporary employees that were you know, essentially migrant workers, they were brought into the company to work at Tim Hortons, have uh, gone to a human rights organization and filed a complaint against their employer alleging human rights abuses. Now, these four Mexican temp workers have filed them against a northern B.C. Tim Hortons. Uh, they accuse the owner of the person who brought them into the country to work at Tim Hortons of doubling their rent and double booking their rooms, like they pay you now X amount of dollars for a place to sleep and then now these decided to put two people in there and charge the same amount of rent which is completely changing the deal during the game. Now the officials from the PC Public, Inter uh, Public Interest Advocacy Center says that, that says that they were forced to live in two homes that were actually owned by the boss. They weren't just like places provided, they were owned they were homes provided by the boss himself. Tony Vandenbosch is the guy's name, and he's the one that's currently going to be investigated. Now, he charged $200 a month in rent to stay there, but then also asked for a, a mid-month $200 tip. It's not been explained yet exactly what that meant, but it was called, apparently euphemistically, a tip. Now, these migrant workers, when they did complain about these situations, they were threatened with deportation uh, at several times, uh, the, their passports were held by the boss, and he is even accused of having said that he is the owner of their lives, and that he controls them. Now, a Tim Hortons, obviously when this story broke, it was, it was a fairly big deal. It's been very, fairly quiet in the media, but obviously this is one of those things that if it, if it does really get out, get really big, it could look really bad for Tim Hortons, uh, one of the beloved institutions of Canada. Now, a Tim Hortons spokesman, Alexandra Seigel, did have this statement. Made aware of the allegations contained in the human rights complaint filed against former Dawson Creek restaurant owner, Tim Hortons works with our restaurant owners and various governments to ensure compliance with the practices and standards. We don't condone any of the behaviors or allegations made in the complaint. And very most likely, Tim Hortons itself actually did not know that this was going on. But this is what migrant workers go through this is this is what they do and they have like a, a you know a relatively easy job i mean compared to what most migrant workers what most imported workers actually do tim Hortons is actually pretty easy in that uh in that regard they do bring these people in and then act like they own them now remember this is this is a lot worse than what it is that we usually go through where we get a job somewhere and they act like we owe them for having worked for them to extract surplus value for their profits. Now think about that. They act like we owe them. Now imagine how they're acting when this, when this labor is imported from another country to where they're taking advantage of increased poverty to get a higher rate of exploitation. I mean, this is northern BC. I mean, you can't say that like they can't find anybody to work at these Tim Hortons. It's completely ridiculous. What they're really saying is that they don't have, they're not willing to pay enough to get people to do this work. And that's one of the great things about the market, right? That if people aren't willing to do a job, then they increase the amount of pay a person gets to incentivize them to come and do it. I mean, that's how the market's supposed to work. And that's the freedom of the market, right? Well, in reality, no, it's not. When the amount that they have to pay is high enough that it threatens their profits, and even then, it doesn't really even have to, they do this. They just and they go grab somewhere else from a, someone from a poorer country, and use it use them as a higher rate of exploitation. So you can imagine, imagine your boss controlled where you lived, not just how much money you have, but I mean physically controlled where you live. I mean they do in a way control where we live now because they do determine the amount of income that we have and determine whether or not we can afford whatever place. Now think, imagine if they literally owned where you live and they literally brought you into the country to work and could take you away out of it and send you back into desperate poverty at any time. Then you can see the kind of God complex that some of these people get when dealing with situations like these. If these allegations are true, and I would tend to think that they are, but of course this has not gone to court, this has not been judged, I hope this guy gets everything he has coming to him for what he did to these people if he did do it.